And you've just heard Hold On Full of Hope by the Martial Arts. In fact, it's the opening track on their new album, In There Like Swimwear, which is out now. And I'm delighted to be joined by Paul Kelly from the Martial Arts. Hello, Paul. Hello there. So what can you tell us about the new album? Um, well, it's oh, where to begin, really. I made an album in 2006 that was released on a Swedish label. So obviously that's say 18 years ago I so um I, I, I yeah i know i know i mean well it's 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 such a long time ago don't feel like exactly the same person which i mean who does after that length of time um i didn't really have a clue what i was doing back well i, I knew how to write a tune hopefully and the album was i, th I thought was really good at, at the time and uh, i had a great opportunity of recording in the swedish label i recorded in this fancy studio to do the drums it was where europe recorded the final countdown and <laughs> benny and bjorn used to own it and then we moved to the producer studio this producer ronald Boot, who did um shout out loud's album and he did a fantastic job and then afterwards i just didn't really know i didn't have a clue what to do so um without going into details of all the woe is me stuff it, yeah it was quite tough because uh, a lot to do with my fault a lot to do with uh, just not not having a clue and uh, hopefully i've got three clues now <laughs> or something um so for quite a few years i well i wanted to make an album but i kind of didn't know where to begin so the previous album they'd said to me hey we want you to come over and do this we'll release it we'll get you this producer you like the sound of that and i was like yes yeah. so i was enabled very much i wasn't a diy guy i didn't know sound engineering or anything like that and my home recording is very basic so I, for years, just found was really overwhelmed by even the idea of recording a drum kit. Mm -hmm. So to try and cut a long story short, um, about 2017, 18, I finally was like, you know, I've accumulated all these songs, start start recording them and working towards it because nobody's going to fall out of the sky. Nothing's gonna, an offer's not going to fall out of the sky and say, we remember that Swedish album from 2006. We love it. You're a genius. So it's a shame that didn't happen. But um. So I started doing recording and that's that's kind of what led to this album. And um, it took a while from then, even from then, because I recorded loads of other stuff. I had a big backlog of songs and also I was working out how to record the on demo quality. And those ended up coming out as EPs. I ended up sorting out maybe those songs should, the older ones should not be on the album. And then new ones kept getting added. So even after I started it, um, it got protracted. It wasn't like a kind of... Um, Thing like the stone roses where they're all like taking drugs for five years and they've forgotten how to you know do anything it was it was more just like you know i was there was no deadline so i was finding my feet so i know it's always really shameful when people have spent a long time on an album and they think well it can't be any good then but uh all i'll say is it wasn't like that it's uh different <laughs> before we go into the new album i'm intrigued yeah. about how you ended yeah. up in Beyond and Betty studio in Sweden. How, who, did someone hear a demo or did, did someone yeah. see it really live? What was the story? Weirdly, I did. I recorded a cover version of a song by the band, the LA band Red Cross, for an online covers album. This is when I was about 20, and uh, which got rejected from, well, they said they put it online as an MP3, uh, but it got rejected from the CD that never even got made. And But I put that online, and somebody from this label, Groover Recordings, heard it happened to really like red cross and they must have liked our cover and they said do you want to do we like your other songs do you want to that was on mp3.com which is going back a long way mm -hmm. um and uh after but they, they stayed in touch with me for a couple of years and they were like we like we like your other songs do you want to do an album and that's that's how it happened i'd, I'd only really played in kind of borderline cover bands school bands and stuff around Dumfries where I grew up that was all very amateurish. And um, so I was sort of like, well, this is fantastic. But I was thrust a little bit into having to do record the big, you know, your big statement debut album uh, without having really, you know, worked around Glasgow and with playing, playing gigs and making all my mistakes there. So I, I kind of, it was a bit difficult when I started doing gigs to support it because I, I didn't even really know how to work it tuner pedal <laughs> so, um, um but do you know what it's all it's all good it's all good in the end because you know it's fine it's just a it's very fine. different way yeah. than most people would probably do it as you say you know kind of being taken to the studio perhaps before you've done 
are you know n numerous live gigs. You know they usually it's yeah, around, but that's really it's interesting. Well, it, it was no gigs when it I formed the martial arts. I, I, I went through a ill-fated period of trying to do it as a band rather than a solo project, and you know very naive about that and some of the people have picked to be in it as well. Um, but we'd done no gigs before we recorded it. It was just me and the drummer that, that oh. at the time that recorded it. And then it was like, I was like, oh, I see Franz Ferdinand have a, they've asked their pal who can't play to to join and he's learned the bass and he's got really good. We'll just do that kind of thing. Or that's what the, the Clash did with Paul Simonon. Paul Simonon's like a genius on the bass. Um, that's what I thought I could do. It was not, it was ill-advised, shall we say. Um you know that that kind of stuff. You know, I was I was I was a bit clueless, but you know, I didn't sort of forgive myself for not knowing any better because I just I just didn't. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of sort of the misguided trajectory of the the old phase of the martial arts. But but yeah, I was really lucky that a label came out of out of the sky, like I was saying, and wanted to make something happy for me. It's a shame that my I was uh, I wasn't in the best headspace for. You know, being smart and uh, making the most of it and working out what the, I mean, what the hell to do with um, with the pile of CDs they gave me and everything. And um, then it was really tough keeping lineups together. That got really upsetting and stuff like that. I didn't really have the thick enough skin for that. And, and um, so I kind of just I gave up for a while. And that's that's was the big hiatus period. Didn't stop writing songs, but it kind of ate away at me that there was never a second album or anything and I was just yeah I was, I was playing with loads of other bands and that was great because that kept me going doing doing what I liked but obvious and I'm happy to do that and for me to perhaps be you know that to be what I do most of the time but at the same time it was you know I, I felt like it felt unfortunate that things had I'd not at least done a second record um uh back then but do you know what it's I've done it now. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. Yeah. It's out now. Yeah. And I was really interested in how the album came up. So the, a lot of these are songs that you've had for a while. Is that right? It's kind of, because it feels like, I mean, we spoke before we started, it's got a summer feel to it. It's got the title in there, like Swimwear, which, you know, kind yeah. of, well, it's, it's got that kind of summer pop feel to it. And is that just because that's what your sound, that's what you like to do? Or was it a case of, these songs will fit on the same album. How did it kind of well? The, the title, the title, definitely came after the album was all written and everything. And I suppose if you look at that front cover and you know the title, you can't not think of summer. It'd be weird if it sounded like I don't know, disintegration by the Cure or something like that. <laughs> um, um, but um, well, yeah, dead. It, yeah, 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 yeah. It, it works. It sort of works, but there was there was no big concept behind that, and then. Um, until later and i'm like hey let's just lean into that but um I, there are some old songs on it but there are some recent ones as well and the eps that i put out about uh four to six years ago uh four to five years ago they they kind of they sort of mopped up all the songs that would have been the second album had there been one at like 2009 10 11 yeah. which is the sort of time that there should have been a follow-up to the first album so I I wanted to so when I started recording I was like I kind of maybe it's best to get those ones out of the way first, um but I kept well, there's one or two dead old ones that that have made it to this album, but uh, even then on those EPs I put a couple of completely new songs because I didn't want it to be oh god these songs are so old, so it's been across about the last four records I've made since the first album, it's been a bit of a deck clearing exercise but it's no it's quite quite therapeutic to do that and I'm. Now, really glad that I'm starting to amass completely brand new songs yeah. um, for something else that I will. It's not. It's not going to take eighteen years for the next one. You know. So um, you are already hope... thinking of what might be uh, album number three, even. Yeah, I've 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 already recorded some songs that are some are nearly there. Like they they need the lyrics written, but um, everything else is recorded. So, but hopefully, there's enough time to once I can get off social media from promoting the this thing which seems like a full-time uh activity um because it's all do it yourself apart from a little bit of help from the label um yeah no i'm really really keen to do it and it's the thing is i think I, i'd lost confidence in or i never really had confidence in the first place for doing my own project there was never really got the momentum going and i sort of i got very defeated when there were some issues with 
after the first album came out and I just didn't know what to do. So um, I don't know. I've got about the wind in my sails about as much as it's ever going to be, <laughs> perhaps. Well, for, you know, in historically speaking, you know. So, yeah, I I, I think it's it's going to be good. I've, I've got a bunch of songs that I think are definite already that are near, nearly done. Uh, as always, leaving the lyrics to the last minute, which is probably why another reason why the second album took so long because I find that tough. But yeah, I'm I'm on to it. And uh, on the album, although as you've said, the martial arts is it's your band and your kind of you know sure. low project, so to speak. Mm -hmm. You've got a lengthy list of musicians on there. Can you talk yeah. a little bit about the collaborative nature of you know getting all these people involved? Well, I can't play the drums. So that's that's why there is uh, three drummers on there, and I when they recorded the first album, we recorded it in Stockholm, and we couldn't get any anyone. I would I would have loved back then to be getting you know your pals into because I knew loads of musicians then and as I do now and to sing backing vocals and it wasn't practical for them to record in Stockholm and back then I guess you could send files and stuff, but I I think I didn't want to annoy the producer by saying oh I've Gone and recorded a bunch of my friends. We're going to stick them on the album. You know, he, he, when a producer's there, they are in charge, and you kind of do stuff when in the room with them. Uh, so I just kind of wanted to, you know, get people involved in my record this time, and you know, not just have me sing every single backing vocal and stuff like that. And you know, why, why would I? You know, and um, hopefully try and not ask the same people too often. So I don't annoy them. <laughs> uh, so that's kind of why there's a variety of people. And um, yeah, I can't play the drums. Someone else has got to play the drums. It's a, it's a great selection of musicians. Uh, if people mm -hmm. check the album, they'll find out just who else is involved. Mm -hmm. And you've mentioned that you also play in other people's bands, which you know you were doing in the years between albums as well. And I was that's wondering, right. does that help you your own music? Does it uh, kind of influence your own music? Oh, it's, it's hard to say how it influences it, but I've definitely picked things up. Like I was the, the first, second band I played with after the martial arts phase one kind of went a bit south was How to Swim. And so they were at the stage where they were just self-recording their albums from scratch. So I get to, like without outside help, you know, drums and everything. And so I uh, got to watch them, to observe them. And it's like the guy we recorded with in the studio, Sam, I, I ended up recording a bunch of stuff with him uh, for my record, my second record, and then um, he he mixed it and everything. Just you know, it's just things like that, just picking up, you know, picking up all that stuff that I didn't really pick up before I made my first album, and um, and so that's been really useful. So just be here and there, you know, getting a few, you know, just getting a few ideas from the other people I work with, and that would explain why so many people from those bands are are on my my record with mainly with backing singing but sometimes a few few other things yeah i, I it's, it means you've probably done great work with them the fact that they're willing to repay the favor i think that's a good thing yeah well, like i was saying try not ask the same person too many times because <laughs> you, you know you don't don't want to get anyone you know fed up with you hopefully but so in terms of playing with other people and even involving other people in your own stuff you don't necessarily have to have kind of shared points of reference or influence it's just you know getting them into not do a job that sounds too you know cool mm. that way but yeah you know that it's still very much your uh kind of view over the whole thing yeah um yeah i i i i, I like i like I like it just getting in people who are just not going to do exactly what I would do, mm -hmm. you know, otherwise there'd be no point, you know, it's, um, it's not about saying, Oh, I had this person on my record or anything like that. And um, there's loads of other people I could ask yeah. if I wanted to go that route. And then it's, yeah, it's only if it makes, makes sense really. Absolutely. And, and are there plans to play these songs live? Kind of. Yeah. Well, so there's, there's a gig, it'll be a mini gig that's shortly after this comes out. Uh, I'll be opening for so Darren Heyman and Carla J. Easton, who I I play with Carla um in her band. Mm -hmm. They're doing a sort of acousticish two solo sets, and I'm gonna do a short set, might be really short set, like four or five songs at the start. And I wish I'd got this together sooner, but I'm in possibly gonna do a full band show 
like a belated album launch. It won't be that far away. But um, I, I wish I unfortunately um, I can't tell you at the time of recording this. Yeah. But I've started to work out how I might be able to do that. And um, all, I can, all I can say is keep an eye on my social media, and I might be saying you know I might be saying something soon. But it's way too soon. I've not I've not fully sorted out who would even be playing with me yet because uh, I need to I need to work it out. Once you know, just if you let me know and I can let uh, the listeners know as well, yep. uh, absolutely. But do you have a date for the one with Carla and Darren? Yeah, I think. Oh God, I think it's the it's the twenty, it's the twenty somethings of August. And it's I think it's the twenty fifth of August. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. And um, what's it like? Uh, well, considering the space between the album, now the album's out. How do you mm -hmm. feel about it? You know, I, I was the reason I'm asking is because I was talking to a few writers whose uh, our debut novels are out, and I was saying mm -hmm. once they're out, you know, and other people react to them. How do you feel? Because they say you don't think about an audience or a readership while you're writing the book, and I guess no. it's the same for musicians. You don't think about listeners while you're making the music. Um, while while you're while you're writing it. Yeah, might or writing it or making it. Do you think? Oh, yeah, this is going to be released, and then people are going to listen to it and react to it. Are you just kind of making it for yourself in a way? Kind of, yeah. The only thought I've had, which I've I've only had this in the last few weeks, is that so sort of like the I'm sort of the small. I mean, it's great that there are people who support and play me and everything, and have written about me and stuff. But I worry sometimes that because I really like synthesizers and drum machines, and they're creeping and have crept increasingly onto the records as things have gone by that some people will just be like, oh, we, we don't like drum machines. You know, that sounds like music from the future or something like that, you know. And, you know, I I like Erasure and the Pet Shop Boys as much as I like Phil Seymour and the Flaming Groovies. So yeah. I, I don't see any... It, to me, the songwriting's kind of the same. You know, um, like... Uh, I don't see there a ton of difference, but some people are very, you know, stay in your lane. And that's, I mean, I'm maybe just not big enough to need to worry about this, but it's like if, if there's a big synth pop song, I put out as a single off my next album, you know, is that just going to be like, oh, God, we thought that guy was something else, you know? You, you, it's interesting because you mentioned um, you're going to have to spend time promoting it on social media, which I guess you mm. were doing in 2006. Am I right? There was no such thing? That we had my we had MySpace, which was yeah. actually everyone laughs when you say MySpace now, but it was actually really pretty good uh, if you're in a band. If you're in a band, um, and Facebook has certainly never there's not there's, there's nothing been quite like MySpace was because of its networking uh, mm. qualities. So in theory, you could be you know if you've got a a gig in you know Guildford or somewhere like that, you can go and look who's in Guildford and maybe make friends with not that I ever did that but you yeah. can maybe make friends with them and so there was there, there were there were good things going for MySpace until they, they they burnt it to the ground but no but obviously things are you know there was no algorithms or anything in those days and it's you know there's there's a lot of stuff that's really lame with social media like you know you can't even link to your record without them punishing you for it so you've got to say my link is in my bio but then you've got to find Greek characters so you you type it so the algorithm won't find you. And it's just oh god, load of drivel that is. So I've been finding all that out and finding ways to make my posts seen by more people than my parents and things like that over the last few months. But there's a there's a lot you've got to do, and yeah. just because there's no PR, there's no plugger, and that's 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 fine. I'm on a small label, uh, but you've kind of got to do it yourself because it's not gonna it's not gonna fall out of the sky. So yeah, spend a long time on it. I think I like to think I would have written some more new stuff recently, but I'm just always on my phone making making stuff. And I don't I don't want to sound like it's a terrible hardship, but it's uh, maybe I'm just slow at it. But it takes yeah, it takes, it takes a lot longer than people who don't do it think it does. For little yeah. clips and little things to do it properly, I know it does take a long a long time. Yeah, but the album's great, so I do hope it mm -hmm. finds uh, the, the the listeners it deserves and. Sure. Until you bring out your kind of big um, synth pop classic, it sounds like all the songs on it sound like they belong on it. You know, as I say, it sounds like a cohesive whole as an album. Yeah, somebody said I did a, another interview about four days ago, and he said it sounds like you've kind of just taken where you left off. 
from the first album, which I, I thought that's great because I was hoping that's how it was. And another reason it took me so long to make the second album is I just didn't want the second album to be like, sound like it was recorded on some bad digital eight track machine or something like that. Because I'd been so spoiled for the, the first album, I had to kind of, you know, I didn't want it to be a horrible drop off in sound quality. And, um, you know, it's it's not. I, I didn't want to make a lo-fi album or whatever, and it just, you know, it's it, it's just not what I was trying to aim for. So I'm pleased that I think I've managed managed to pull that off. I think you definitely have, mm -hmm. Paul. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. It's been a pleasure. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. No, thank you for having. Me. And this is the martial arts and working on my eyes. <laughs>